Good morning, everyone. This is Skip Farr from Hard Dollar. This session, I'd like to talk about uh, pricing and markup strategies for Hard Dollar. We'll be looking at two basic forms, the price breakdown structure and the payout demand proposal register. I'm going to use my training job. I have it open, so I'm going to go right to it. This is the payout demand proposal register and the price breakdown structure. So essentially, I just want to go through some uh, issues that uh, set the framework and how we can price things out in some of the situations that we may run into. Of course, most of you know the PBS is a summary of all your costs. We have the ability to add your profit. Of course, quickly, there's a number of ways to add your profit. Some people like to mark up their certain costs, mark up certain cost categories. So say my direct cost, I'll right click and say open. Little bulb help tells you what's going on. Essentially, I got a little description. I'm going to mark up my cost, my direct cost in this particular case. There's my direct cost dollars. The rate is a percentage. The total cost. So I can put a total rate or mark up per cost category. And of course, that generates a, an amount for me. In this case, five or eight thousand dollars. So when I come back to here, here's my five or eight. Of course, this percent now is the percentage of the target price. This is what they call margin. You could also come in and say, yeah, I want 10% for the whole job. Type in 10. So it calculates the amount, the profit amount, that is 10% of the target price. So you have a couple of ways to add what you would determine profit that is, a, that is distinguished from the cost, direct and or indirect cost. I hit my little refresh button because what that does, it updates and refreshes these tabs up here. I won't spend much time here, but just quickly on this markup analysis, essentially this gives you the ability to compare the profit dollars as it might be impacted by other costs within the system. So quickly, when I want to look at this profit dollars as a function of my labor cost, so right now, my markup equals 90% of my total labor cost. So if my labor cost would overrun by 90%, what this tells me, I would have used all my markup to pay for my labor. So these are diff essentially uh, uh, analysis, risk analysis for the job uh, and how the profit amount might be impacted by other costs within the system. Of course, once we have our target price, now we're ready to price the pay items out. So whether you call them pay items, tender items, BOQ items, basically it's a price that an owner wants, and that's how you, the contractor, will get paid. Since I made changes to my target price, you get this red text that says refresh. What this does, it refreshes these data blocks for me, so everything is current. Here's my target that was generated. I think the job should be that. I haven't priced any of my items out yet. That's why they're zero. So you have some options to get started. First of all, this block is the block that gives you the cost distribution per pay item. So whatever pay item you select will give you its cost distribution. It's direct cost, share of overhead, share of business overhead, share of profit, and we give you a theoretical balanced unit, unit price. Now, you can price this whatever you want. So we'll give you the comparison of what you might want to price it at versus what a balanced price, usually uh, dictated by contract uh, terminology, would provide for you. So this gives you the ability to either go up or down from a value. And this is, of course, what this balanced unit price is. Now, this over here is related to the whole job. So right now, I need to price these items. You can individually go in here, look up here, and start pricing things if you like. But we do have some auto price options, which I quickly want to discuss. We have this one that says direct cost only. You could start there if you want. Think of these as essentially the ability to get started, automatically price items, so then you can make adjustments from then on. So if I say direct cost only, Every item now we have priced with this direct cost. So this variance, though, 
obviously is the difference between the current price, the proposal price to the owner, and the target that you think the job is worth. So right now I have a variance of over a million dollars. Well, since I priced using my direct cost only, essentially this variance represents your overhead and profit dollars. So now you have some dollars to decide how you might want to spread them if you wanted to. We have another auto price option. One that says use items unit price. I'll do that. So basically then all we do is take the items balance price and that's what we enter as its current price. So we simply took each item's balance price, priced the job, came up with a total. But in this case I still have a variance, five bucks. And that's simply due to rounding precision. In other words, my unit price, what's my decimal precision? If I carried this out to, say, 15 decimals instead of 2, we could probably get pretty close to 0. So that's why we have this other option that says balanced hit target total. So if I do that, hard dollar is going to try to get rid of that $5 so that my current hit the target exactly. So that's all that those two auto price options are doing for us. And again, you can change things and so forth and so on, okay? For instance, say I want MOB here, but I want MOB to be, you know, closer to 10% of my target. So I'm going to say I want that to be $400,000. Well, the balance was $13,000, but I'm going to price it at $40,000. Oops, I said I wanted $400,000. Put my other zero in there. I'm at $400,000. Well, I got a variance. If I want my current hit to target, I need to cut $386,000. But I'm going to lock my MOB price. So I'm going to get a view here, go back to my standard view, which has this locked price column. I'm going to hide my currency because I want to see more stuff over here. So I'm going to lock my MOB. But this remainder, I can spread to all the other items if I want to. So if I go Tools, Auto Price, say I choose this one, and I say do not overwrite lock prices, I can do that. And so now I said I'm at MOBA 400, but the other variance now I distribute to all the other unlocked items. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is unlock my MOB, go back to, say, this. And one notes another column here. For those clients who have pay items that are given you from the owner, and you will get paid on the final measured quantity. In other words, your unit price is always times the pay quantity, but you may have done a takeoff and you disagreed with what that final measured quantity was going to be that would generate your revenue. We call that the forecast quantity. And that's where we get this forecast column up here. So you may notice quickly, I've got my aggregate base. I'm expecting 45,000 ton, not the 40. On my hot asphalt, I'm expecting 35,000 instead of 38. So I have an overrun, and I have an underrun. When I price all the items with a balanced price, this variance on the profit row is the difference between the target and the forecast, because the forecast is revenue, the price, and the profit is a function of the forecast quantity, not the owner's quantity. So we're forecasting for you what the results would be for revenue and profit if these become the final major quantities. Well, basically, since I priced every item with their balanced price, this is telling me I'm going to lose $5,000 of profit because I have some overrun and underrun. So I don't have these priced correctly to take advantage of the difference in quantities that I'm expecting. So we have this other option that simply says unbalanced hit target total. I'm going to do that. Now what Hard Dollar did, it took the items that was going to underrun and used their direct cost only. In other words, this item does not include its share of overhead and profit. So the dollars we picked up here, we spread to the overrun item. So instead of 1381, we priced it at 20. So effectively what we've done is 
price the overrun higher, the underrun lower, and by virtually the same current price, just a few dollars difference, we're forecasting that amount of revenue, profit, which is a $50,000 gain over what the owner's quantity would have provided. So again, if you have items that will measured and you get paid on the final measured quantity, you may enter in your forecast here and we will provide for you the expected result if these become the final measured quantities. So one other thing I'm going to quickly look at here. I'm going to go back to my auto price and choose that one. We also have this thing called custom. What it's doing is allowing you to have additional dollars that you can play with or distribute how you want. So you may notice this is the PBS form with the dollars per segment. Here's my profit. Let's say I just want to remove my profit dollars, which is about $445,000. So I've removed this amount of money. I want to spread the remaining dollars and I can choose how I want those to be spread. So I'll click OK. So effectively I have priced the items based on my rules minus the profit. So now I could say, you know, I'm going to lock everything, but unlock mold, clear and grub. These are the items I'm going to do at the very first of the job. I'll leave the others the way they are, but now I'm going to spread my profit to just my few items up front. So now I can simply go tools, auto price, do not overwrite lock prices. So based on my decimal precision, I took my remaining dollars and priced these items accordingly. Now again, I can still say, you know, I want MOB at, you know, say $100,000. I can lock MOB and again, reduce it. Well, I'm not going to reduce my one that I'm going to overrun here, so I'll lock it, and I'll reduce these others. Tools, auto price, do not overall lock prices, so I've adjusted clear and grub and unclassified X. Understanding what this is telling us, how we can price things, over and under runs, target versus forecast, you can quickly make changes, last minute changes, that can affect how your final revenue would be. Lock items you don't need to change. Keep your last ones open that you will make changes to. So the pricing, pay item proposal register allows you to do those kinds of pricing. So hopefully this was some value and thank you for uh, looking in. Talk to you later.